How's it going everybody? Marvel the Cross 316 back with another comic book flashback and we are now looking at The Amazing Spider-Man issue 30. This issue came out in November of 1965 and we are looking at a brand new villain today and that is this cat burglar. He's an ordinary villain. He doesn't have any cool superpowers but this is a pretty unique issue. Nothing less. There's a lot of drama that is involved here especially with Peter Parker and Betty Brant so let's go ahead and, and delve into this story today as always before we get started go ahead and give this video a big old like and if you have not subscribed to the Marvel Across 316 YouTube channel go ahead and click the subscribe button because you're going to get more videos just like this as I can continue to look at the 1963 series of Spider-Man. This volume one series is the classic stories of Spider-Man and I'm doing this all in chronological order as I've been doing for the past 30 issues. So go ahead give this video a big O subscribe button if you, if you or click it rather click the subscribe button. Go ahead give this video a like and let's go ahead and get started. So as always this is brought to you by Stan Lee, Steve Ditko and Artie Semek, the original lineup for the past 30 issues and they have been doing a spectacular job here. So we pick up the issue here at where we left off from last issue. Remember Spidey went one on one with the Scorpion. The Scorpion made a reappearance last issue threatening J. Jonah Jameson's life. He went to the Daily Bugle and there was a big skirmish between Spider-Man and the Scorpion and the one person that was right in the middle of that big fight was Betty Brant. She's become ill because of the fight and so Ned leads. we're not too certain who this person is, might be a neighbor, maybe a friend of Betty Brant's, is looking after Betty Brant because Betty Brant just could not handle that much action. But we're also very concerned about the health of Aunt May. She's been having dizzy spells lately, and she has not told Peter Parker about these dizzy spells. So there's more drama involved with her and what's been going on with Aunt May. We, we're not too certain and we're not going to find out really what's been going on with Aunt May's health in this issue. But Peter Parker is oblivious to what Aunt May has been feeling and her, her health. So Peter Parker, he's like, you know what, it's about time I just get back into the swing of things, look for some action. And here we go, we had the first appearance of the Cat Burglar and Spidey was just did not see the cat burglar there climbing up on that wall. And the cat burglar was pretty happy that he wasn't caught by Spider-Man. But we are expected to see Spidey and the cat burglar get involved in some action here pretty soon. We see the cat burglar here. He sneaks into this guy's apartment, steals a bunch of money, and this person's apartment just so happens to be J.J. J., which is J. Jonah Jameson. So he's going to be involved in this story today, and he pretty much tells the newspaper, he puts in his newspaper, that he's putting a thousand dollar reward for the capture of this menace. And so that's going to be a big part of this story here is the capture of the cat burglar by any means. Now we're also introduced here by these group of people here. They're in um, purple, and we're not too certain if they work for the cat burglar or if they work for another person, but they make their appearance here, and they're pretty skilled in what they do. So they have these high-tech um, gear here where they can magnetize their boots to stick on trucks. I mean, so we see Spidey get into the action here. We're not too certain who these guys work for. We think they work for the cat burglar, and they do mention the cat burglar's name, but when I've read this issue, we're not too certain whether they work for the cat burglar or not. Now, Spidey overhears JJJ, which is J. Jonah Jameson, mention the $1,000 reward, and so Spidey thinks that's a great thing to do. So he, he's going to go and pretty much just pick on um Jonah here. He's going to pick on Jameson here and say, hey, you know what? You better keep that deal because I'm going to capture the cat burglar. And so we see right here what Jameson is thinking about how Spidey is going to be celebrated in the streets and he's going to have to write that $1,000 check and he's going to be televised on camera and he's just going to be publicly embarrassed. So this is Jameson's worst fear 
come to almost, or maybe we'll see right here, could be happening right here in this issue where he is going to have to publicly give Spider-Man a thousand dollars. Now we also see a reappearance here of Frederick Fossil. We haven't seen him in quite some time, and we know that he has his alter ego of Patch, who is pretty much the person that goes um, in the un underground world to see what's been going on. He has connections with the underworld because remember, Frederick Foswell was involved in Cromit um, earlier in the Spider-Man saga here. So he's going to be working for Jameson here to catch the cat burglar. And so we also see a reappearance of Liz Allen. Remember, we haven't seen Liz Allen since issue 28 when Peter Parker and Liz Allen and the rest of um, Midtown High School graduate, and there was a graduation. So we see Liz Allen, she's working, and basically she's trying to get away from this guy right here, which is Flash Thompson. So we see some old characters reappear here in this issue. So, so there's a lot of, it's very different here in this issue, whereas, you know, there's some action in other comics and other issues of Spider-Man. This has to do with a lot of storytelling, a lot of drama. So Peter Parker and Flash Thompson greet each other as old classmates, and um, Peter Parker here knocks Flash Thompson out right here because he notices that there's a guy on the roof he thinks it's the cat burglar but we come to find out that this is just an ordinary crook peter parker wakes up flash thompson says that they both clunked heads so that's his alibi there now here's the big big deal here with betty brant there's a big um re revelation here between peter parker ned Leeds, and betty brant and we come to find out because the whole big story here is that Ned Leeds has proposed to Betty Brant, and she gives that information to Peter Parker, and Peter Parker doesn't know what to do with that information. He's pretty mad about it, and another thing that Betty Brant tells Peter Parker, which makes Peter Parker feel even worse, is that she could never date or marry an adventurer like Spider-Man, because he mentioned Spider-Man's name to Betty Brant, and remember, Betty Brant's brother died in issue 12, and so she could never possibly ever imagine marrying an adventurer, and remember, Peter Parker is Spider-Man, so this is a deal breaker right here, but he can't tell Betty Brant, so he ends up leaving her house, and Betty Brant is so confused as to why Peter Parker all of a sudden does not want to talk to her. So this pretty much ends the relationship between Peter Parker and Betty Brant. It was a long time run, but, I mean, you understand what's going on here. I mean, Peter Parker just cannot reveal his secret identity to Betty Brant because if he does, it's a, it's a done deal. She will not marry Peter Parker if, if she found out that he was Spider-Man. So we also see just more things going on, Patch calling Jameson saying he's not finding any leads to the cat burglar. We also see Spidey stopping this gang of uh, crooks here and it looks like they were set up by these guys in purple here to distract Spider-Man and we also see again Aunt May not feeling too well but she's hiding her pain from Peter Parker. Just a lot of drama going on in this issue. We, we see the uh, civilian identity of the cat burglar. Don't know his true name, but he decides, you know what, he's going to do one more crime before he lays low. And so this is exactly where we're going to pick up. This is the climax of the story. The cat burglar decides, you know what, I've not been caught by Spider Man yet, and it's not going to happen. But as we know, all good stories end with Spider Man catching the bad guy. And so here we go. The cat burglar is up on the roof. A guy sees him on the roof as he's climbing this uh, cable cord here. And then the flash lights all the media, everybody's down on the streets. And so the cat burglar is on TV. And we have Jameson right here watching on the TV. But all of a sudden, Spider Man shows up on the scene and he starts getting very anxious because he knows that Spider Man could possibly catch this guy. So we see right here there's a 
pretty much a chase between Spider-Man and the cat burglar here. And Spider-Man, I mean, tries his best to catch this guy. And this guy has all the tricks up his sleeves. He has automatic explosives, everything that you can think of. So some great artwork by Steve Ditko here. He tries to stop Spider-Man with a, a gun, but that's not going to work. And then the police finally catch um, or catch up with Spider-Man and the cat burglar up on this rooftop. So it's a, a standstill here between the cat burglar and these cops. The cat burglar tries to use a distraction, and it seems to work, but they soon find out that he is hiding in this chimney right here by hanging up on this rope and they threaten to cut the rope but the cat burglar is like no 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 don't do it so we see right here the capture of this villain right here spider-man gets some pictures for the daily bugle and jameson is relieved that spider-man did not capture the cat burglar so we end the story here and we see Betty Brant, she's continuing to try to press Peter Parker as to why she he's avoiding her. And he's pretty much saying, you know what, don't bother. Ned Leeds is the guy for you. So that's the end of it. And so we end the issue here on a sour note as Peter Parker walks away from Betty Brant. Betty Brant being very confused as to why Peter Parker is hiding this big secret because that's what she feels like. She's she feels like she is just doesn't understand why Peter Parker all of a sudden doesn't want her in his life. And so that's how we end um, issue number 30 here. Hope you like this issue. Hope you've watched all the way through. If you have, go ahead, like this video, comment down below what you like about this issue, and I will see you next time as we look at issue number 31.